So this is a six crore question. Who won the Gujarat elections? Well, electorally, clearly the BJP will form the government. Uh, but was the elections a psychological upper for the Congress? Now, I've called the outcome quizzically inscrutable in my piece. But there comes a moment in politics when it is the resurrection moment. Uh, we saw that with Mrs. Indira Gandhi in 1978. We saw that with uh, VP Singh in Allahabad. These elections turned the politics of the country. We saw that this year uh, in the UK when the Labour Party came out of nowhere to reassert and become a strong opposition to the Conservatives. I suspect something similar has happened in the Gujarat Assembly polls of 2017. Uh, here's my first take on the Gujarat elections. Rahul Gandhi actually took on Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is a colossus in Gujarat. He is an iconic leader. He's a Gujarati. He took him on in the lion's den. He could have stayed away. But fortune often does favour the brave and by taking him on, by actually getting him to reduce his uh, awesome majority that he got in uh, 2014. Remember, he got nearly 60% of the vote and he got nearly 160 assembly seats. Against that, uh, the vote has fallen to about 49, so he's lost about 10 to 11 percentage points of the vote uh, and he's lost almost 60 to 70 assembly constituencies. So Rahul Gandhi had the gumption to go into the lion's den and to challenge him and in this instance has come away uh, with what I would call uh, is a reasonably rejuvenating outcome for him and his party. My second take of the elections is that when uh, BJP won that spectacular UP election about eight or nine months back, uh, people thought that that was the trend. People said that the way the BJP is going up, it's game, set and match in 2019, it's all over. But I even remember at that point in time telling my editors that I don't think the UP elections were a trend. I thought they were a peak. And I think the Gujarat elections sort of proved that point. Uh, that up until then, the BJP had been fighting in states where the BJP was the underdog. And it had the terrific tail whirlwind of uh, the Modi win in 2014 to get it across. And it did that in state after state, in Maharashtra, Haryana, um, UP, uh, Uttarakhand, it did that. But with UP, that run had come to an end. It is now going to be fighting in states where it suffers from a double incumbency disadvantage. And that really is my third take from the Gujarat uh, Assembly elections, that now the BJP will suffer a double incumbency disadvantage. Uh, and therefore, uh, look at the trend of some of the polls. And I'm going to mix up uh, local student elections, municipalities, panchayats, by-elections. Look at Punjab, look at Goa, look at Chitrakoot, look at the Dusu elections in Delhi, look at the UP local polls, which uh, finished just a few weeks back. In all of them, the BJP has lost significant uh, vote share and a number of seats. What that shows is that as the double incumbency disadvantage sets in, the Congress could move in for the kill. It could move in for the kill in some of the key elections coming up. For instance, there are by-elections coming up in Pulpur, Gorakhpur, Ajmer, Alwar, in Bihar. In all of that, uh, the opposition could have an upper hand. Also remember that there are big assembly elections coming up in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. In all of them, the BJP suffers a double incumbency disadvantage. And remember now, with the Congress's uh, seen resurrection in the Gujarat assembly elections, it, it possibly will be able to garner more funds and resources from friends and well-wishers and donors. So therefore, let's get ready for a uh, strong political battle, a string of them, uh, in 2018. My fourth takeaway from uh, today's uh, Gujarat elections is that demonetization and GST, which the BJP and Prime Minister Modi in particular had been spinning as an extremely successful political move, I think that's beginning to bite now. Remember, uh, when demonetization happened over a year back, uh, people suffered, but people suffered willingly because they, they thought that Prime Minister Modi was doing something which was very noble. He had brought the rich uh, to their knees. He was, it was a, it was a, 
terrific anti-dishonest move and people supported it completely. But when that got combined with the problems that have been there in the GST rollout, the, actually it's a botch up the GST rollout. When you put the two together, it's really beginning to bite. And that reflects in the vote in Gujarat. Remember in Gujarat, in places like Surat where there was a lot of dissatisfaction, Prime Minister Modi could pull in his Gujarati credentials and still neutralize a lot of that anger. But some of that strategy is unlikely to work in the rest of the country. My fifth takeaway is quite straightforward actually, that now with the Congress having uh, resurrected itself uh, quite a bit in Gujarat, it will necessarily become the fulcrum of opposition unity. Rahul Gandhi, who until now, perhaps a lot of senior politicians in the opposition were not taking as seriously uh, as, his, as, as they would take his mother, will now be forced to take him that seriously, will be forced to listen to him as the fulcrum of opposition unity. And opposition unity is an imperative if the opposition wants to make a mark in the 2019 poll. So therefore, a broad alliance between the Congress, TMC, DMK, BSP, SP is something that is imperative. And finally, although I thought I would give five takeaways, I'll give a sixth one. This is unsolicited for the Prime Minister. Um, uh, the Prime Minister must remember that uh, uh, the reason he won such a spectacular victory in 2014 was because he pivoted to the centre. He got uh, about five percentage points of the core Congress vote which moved to him. Remember, in, in about 15 years, from 1999 onwards to 2014, roughly 50% of the vote went to the BJP and Congress together and an average of 25% apiece to them if you average out over the polls. But in 2014, uh, Prime Minister Modi got 30% plus and the Congress got 20% minus. So five percentage points of the Congress, the moderate Congress vote had moved to Prime Minister Modi. Now, if he does not re-pivot to the centre, if he continues to um, indulge uh, the right fringe, then I'm afraid he is in danger of losing a bit of that five percentage points of the vote. And if it does indeed become 25% apiece in 2019, then the race is wide open.